but I guess for most Ghanaians nowadays, if you drank any of our water, uh, you would have some thinking at the back of your head. But to, to situate the conversation, we have joining us uh, a number of guests uh, from the water resources uh, systems. We have one of those joining us. We have the sachet operators as well joining us to tell their side of the story, in addition to our very own Richard Kodonyako, uh, who joins the conversation uh, now. He's going to situate the conversation from the standpoint of the Food and Drugs Authority as well, in respect of what they had to uh, share with him. Richard, good morning. Good morning, Benjamin. And uh, I believe that is uh, Mr. Tete. A very good morning to you as well. Good morning, and uh, good morning to your cherished listeners. All right. Let's Thank start with uh, Kojunya very quickly. Uh, you put together this hotline uh, documentary. I'd like to find out from you, what exactly did you find to be the take of uh, the Food and Drugs Authority generally on this matter? Well, so um, this documentary uh, was conceived as a result of the increasing activities of Galamse. In fact, when I did the Poison Rivers documentary, it emerged that our water treatment systems were suffering, and so something ought to be done. Then it also dawned on me that what about the other sources of drinking water we have in the country? And so when you talk about that, then your mind is adverted to sachet or bottled water. Because in Ghana, either you consume uh, water that is flowing through your tap or the sachet or bottled water. And so that is how come we came about it. And so we had um, a variety of conversations that included the Food and Drugs Authority. But they situated this particular conversation because they are the regulators. They regulate the quality of water and the food that we take in. And so it was so crucial that we needed to get to them. They explained that a lot of things have been done, a lot of interventions have been put in place to ensure that what you consume in your home or what you buy on the street is actually of good quality. And then when you drink it, uh, no harm will come to you. And so it was on that basis that we spoke with the Food and Drugs Authority. In fact, we spoke with Madam Lovelace Johnson, who uh, explained that, well, I mean, it is not everything that they're able to do 100%. If you may travel to a party uh, where you even live, there may be sachet water pro uh, production companies that are springing up that do not come under their radar. And so all of these people just escape their radar. And so it behoves you and I to also report them when you see them. In fact, some of them have even uh, taken the certified mark of the Ghana Standards Authority and the Food and Drugs Authority, and then they have embossed it on the sachet water. So you may be in Accra, the popular ones that you do consume, but it is not all of them that have been certified. And so all of these may not pass through the regular filtration systems and then the eagle eyes of the sachet water production company. But then again, you think about the Ghana Water Company. Are they able to treat the water that we drink? They said, yes, yes. We are able to treat it. We pass through. We have certified ISOs, education, and all of that. And Ghana's treatment system is one of the best on the African continent. But why are people not consuming the water that flows through your tap? I'm no, I know that is one of the poignant uh, questions that you will be wondering, because in your respective rooms, I'm not sure the last time that you ever drank water that flowed through your tap. You, at best, you may use it for washing, for cooking, and all of that. But the, then the scientists have also told us that Ghana's water treatment system is unable to take out the heavy metals. Indeed. And so it situates the conversation better that why is Galamse destroying our water bodies? Because in times past, they were doing their mandates by um, getting the water treated for you, and we had no problems with um, heavy metals. But now, Galamse is done at the bellies of our rivers. And so that has brought together all of these conversations. And, and, and Richard, right before you go, that, that is where I, I want us to focus. Well, the FDA is saying 
uh, there are some pockets of sachet water operators that spring up from time to time, and we may not be able to keep tabs on all of them. That in itself is worrying, but you must also realize that our FDA is one of the best on the continent, and it also has its challenges. That is accepted. But when it comes to the Ghana Water Company Limited, listening to the different parties, including Stanley Mate, who speaks for the GWCL, saying that, no, our water is safe and all of that, how do we take it? I saw you drinking some tap water. That, that was, that was uh, very brave of you. I, 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 I would struggle to do that. But the point is, when the scientists also tell us, because of the quantum of heavy metals and the, the quantum of chemicals we must use to treat them, these things flowing through our taps, the water may have exceeding levels. Where do we stand? Which is which? Should we listen to the scientists? or pay attention to the Ghana Water Company Limited saying you can literally drink our water? Well, I, I go with the scientists and I go with the, the Ghana Standards Authority because they were united with the scientists saying that the Ghana Water Company is unable to treat the heavy metals or take the heavy metals out. And so their mandate ideally is to take care of the pathogens and the other things that come into the water. But with the emerging trends of Galamse, mm. I'm not sure they're able to take them out. But they say that, well, what they have been, the power that they have been closed with, the mandate that they have been given, they're able to treat it. And so you heard Stanley Mate indicating that in his house, he fills bottles of um, bottles that he has with the Ghana water because he is there and he knows the processes that the water goes through and they are able to treat it. So it becomes some difficulty, I mean, <laughs> um, towing one side or tilting to the other side. And so, Benjamin, that has become an albatross on the neck of all of us. Mm. Whether we go with the, tap, uh, the water that flows through our tap or with the sachet water, um, it becomes a, a very serious thing. Richard, uh, thank you so much for the work you've been doing. That's our features editor, Richard Kujinaku, and he's the brain behind that latest hotline documentary, Drinking with suspicion. I don't know how suspicious you are, but uh, I think I'm going to stick to what I do. Uh, right. Sweetie, so let's you. bring in Samson Tete, and he's a water resources engineer. Samson, thank you so much for joining the conversation. So in terms of impact of illegal mining activities on our water bodies, that is clear that we, we have some struggles and challenges there. But from your perspective, I want to hear from you what measures are in place to ensure that the filtration and treatment um, processes for tap water are sufficient. Samson, you have to unmute for us. Mr. Tete, are you, are you with us? Mr. Tete, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Great. Um, I hope you can hear me now. Yes, loud and clear. Your take now. Mm. Yes. So uh, I was saying that when you look at both sides of the conversation, um, coming from the FDA, the Ghana Standards Authority, and also um, the Ghana Water Company, um, we've seen that, and then the scientists saying that um, the treatment systems that Ghana Water Company has and per their mandate, they are not able to deal with the trace metals, the heavy metals in, in the water. They are also saying they meet ISO standards for water uh, treatment and for quality. So I will say that um, as a matter of fact, Ghana Water Company does not even serve the entire population of the nation. So granting that, yes, their systems are able to deal with the heavy metals, we still have a chunk of people, a large portion of the population out there that is not being served by Ghana Water Company. We also have the Community Water and Sanitation Agency that serves the rural folks and the small towns, which heavily depends on groundwater mm. uh, availability. And so I want to say that uh, when you look at the menace that the irresponsible mining and, and illegal mining is causing. Uh, I say that because we keep mentioning illegal mining, but then there is also another regime of mining, which is irresponsible mining, which equally is affecting the environment and polluting our water bodies. 
Now, these trace elements, which are coming as a result of uh, anthropogenic uh, sources, that is human activities. Mm. We do have some um, contamination as a result of um, what we call geogenic um, sources, where the interaction between the water bodies and the rocks uh, will cause some of the minerals within the rocks mm -hmm. to get into the water. And depending on the amount of those minerals, it may be injurious to human health. Now, having, having said that, we, we, we have a problem because once these heavy metals leached into the underground water systems, then we have a problem where households that are depending on their own uh, water supply system by drilling boreholes will also begin to have that problem. Uh, are individuals able to afford these treatment systems? And so if you ask me, the solution we need to take is the fact that we have to, in as much as we cannot stop mining, I'm not talking about illegal mining, we have to have proper control measures in place. Because once you're able to deal with the source of the problem, then you have a good solution. Right. But if you're treating other things like the same things, the causes uh, after the problem, then you are not dealing with the problem. And I think that is the issue we should be dealing with, dealing with the source of the problem, which is the pollution that is coming from irresponsible and illegal mining. Now, and the Ghana Water to... Company Mr. Tete, is saying that the, yes. the water that they are providing is clean and safe for drinking. And Ghana Standards Authority is reiterating that point. But we also heard them say that um, the water, the dirty water that flows through our taps, is not coming from them. You also just mentioned that the community water and sanitation, I mean, they take care of the rural areas. So how do we ensure that the water flowing through our taps is either coming from Ghana Water Company Limited or the other sources like the community water and sanitation? And how do we ensure that whatever we are receiving is safe for drinking? Yes, yeah, so um, we have regulatory bodies in place. Um, I think so far, apart from the FDA and the GSA, um, the other uh, regulatory institutions uh, you've not spoken to in this interview. Um, we do have the um, um, standards for water. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you are doing your borehole, you are expected to test for the we have over 23 elements that have been stated by the Ghana Standards Authority that you need to test for. Mm. And uh, as a matter of fact, you are supposed to be testing for water that is coming from underground, that is the groundwater, every six months so that you are able to take care of the dry season and then also to take care of the wet season. So throughout the year, you know the kind of quality that you are having because water quality is not uh, stagnant. The water is moving. And so if you are downstream today, the activities that are happening upstream with time will travel downstream. So if pollution is happening, yeah. in, 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 uh, yes, with time, it will get to your end. And so okay. there is that that has to go on. But we move on to a higher level where we talk about water safety planning. Mm -hmm. So the water safety planning encompasses all these uh, elements, not just testing for water, but then the activities that are happening in the environment also being controlled. There are levels and limits, places you can touch and you cannot touch. Right. Um, if you have a borehole, the warehouse needs to be protected. And so these are, is the water safety planning that we need to take seriously so that all the various elements that contribute to protecting the water is adhered to, then we can ensure we are having safe and wholesome water from whichever source we are So, having. Mr. Tete, how seriously should we take water filtration in our individual homes? The gentleman talked about KDF 55 and activated carbon, ways of, you know, filtering water in your home just to be safe. How seriously should we be taking this? Water is life. <laughs> so... So, I mean, what you are taking in, I mean, we do have a lot of, the, the, the side effect when it comes to health 
is really serious. And so we really need to take that seriously. But then um, the question again is how many people can afford these mm. systems to treat their water? That is why I go back to protecting the source so that every Ghanaian is having wholesome water in, 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 in their home to drink. And so that is, that is the issue because some can afford the treatment systems, others cannot afford, and everybody have to drink water. And this is where government and the regulatory bodies and every one of us comes in that we need to take responsibility and make sure these uh, irresponsible mining and illegal mining that few people are gaining has to be stopped. Right. I mean, we already have an idea of what the impacts of long-term use or reliance on these polluted water bodies are. But help us paint the picture in terms of the consequence for communities that solely rely on rivers impacted by Galamsey activities. What are the health risks? It's, 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 uh, <laughs> I don't know where to start from mm. um, because um, when you take in uh, cyanide, it, it's, 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 it's suicidal. It's death. Mm. So, so what we are dealing with, we have no idea what we are dealing with. Because in the first place, most of these communities don't even know. And you know, people litter boreholes around thinking that, oh, yes, it's the surface water which is polluted, but then the underground water is not. But when you look at the hydrologic cycle, these are connected. The surface water gets into the underground water. The, the groundwater comes into the surface water depending on the time of the season. And so we are not safe once you, you temper with one source. And so what it is is that um, the health risks are enormous. Right. I mean, we are going to have issues with liver. We are going to have issues with um, 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 cancer mm. because some of these things will, is going to cause cancer. And these things are on the increase if you look at the statistics right. now. And so... It's, it's an, it calls for an immediate action that nobody, no Ghanaian, should be drinking contaminated water. I mean, it's the responsibility of government and all of us to ensure that these things are stopped. And Thank we you. give them a portable source of water. Right. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Samson. Mr. Tete, uh, stay with us. Uh, we'll, we'll need to uh, also hear from the Sachet and Packaged Water Group. Magnus Nunu joins the conversation. Magnus, good morning. Mr. Nunu, if you can hear me, please unmute. Good. And good morning to your listeners. Great. Uh, thank you for joining. I think you, you may have missed a few things up to this point, just to rehash uh, for you. So the Ghana Water Company Limited is saying that a lot of the time people buy sachet water thinking, oh, it is better than the tap water, but that, in fact, it is not the case, and that some of you the sachet water producers, you simply pick from Ghana Water Company Limited, literally out of the tap, bag it, and sell it. So I want to start from there. What processes do the members of your association put the water through before it goes on sale in sachet form? Okay, thank you very much. Um, what we do is that we pick the raw water and process it and in processing it, we do what we call a physio analysis of the water itself to know what contaminates it. Usually there are three main, what contaminates water fall into three main categories. Right. First one being clarity, you know, uh, particles as we see contaminating the water. The second one being pathogens, that is uh, Germs. microbiology or microorganisms. Right. The third in um, heavy metal. But at the end of the day, if you pick your raw water and you process this water, you must make sure that you have clarity and then you have taken care of pathogens and then also heavy metals are not present. Then it becomes portable for the public to drink. Our main source could be boreholes mainly and then also some of our members also depend on Ghana water. But as you have to have Head, or maybe through your documentary, you realize that Ghana water is limited. They do that, they, they, they just they are able to just do two. I mean, the colonial masters left a system where they are able to do the clarity and the pathogens. But 
The third part is left lingering and wondering. And that makes it more appealing. And that the third part you are talking about is heavy metals, dealing with the heavy metals. The so then, the only source that the public and the whole Ghana has today that they can rely on is sachet water or bottled water or both. Because we go the extra mile of dealing with the pathogens and the clarity and also tackle heavy metal. We now, if you go to FDA, the basic and the standard method we use in filtration, you everybody has to use what we call the reverse osmosis system. That actually takes away everything metal, everything pathogen to a very large extent and clarity from the water. So as we speak now, the surest way, and you can check, I mean, if, if your water contains heavy metal, granted that you've done with all it, you will not even get what it is, the FDA number to put your water out there on the market. Everybody, everybody are, are, you saying, are you saying this can't be faked? No, I think that the, the system is quite tight. I mean, the uh, FDA, the, the FDA is, itself, I, M M Mr. I, Nunu, the FDA itself yeah. admits that some spring up and outside of their regulation, before you realize it, there's this place in some locality that you are not aware of and they are producing. Some of them are bagging raw, you know, water coming out of the tap. And that is what they are, they are bagging and, and selling. So this bit about an FDA code and all of that does not really wash, does it? But I think the issue here is the general will be what percentage of water we have there on the market are holds up. I guess, I guess perfection is only attainable with God. It's a, maybe a slight percentage, but I can, I can vouch that in this day and age, in this day and age, largely, a lot of the waters that you see there are all certified by FDA because it's very risky. It is very risky. Recently, held this, uh, uh, what is it, stakeholder meeting with the FDA, and you know, you could be jailed. Somebody was jailed 15 years. I'm speaking on record. You could check. And so then, it is very scary to even put anything out there. I mean, you must have the courage mm. to really go but then, 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 then the FDA is sharp on that for you to go to jail for but, producing such a water. Mr. Nunu, if you don't know yeah. the statistic of how many of these are going through the right processes, then I don't think we can have a conversation about how many are we, not because you don't know and I don't know. Even the, FDA, even the FDA does not know. So I don't think we can sit here and say by and large because we don't have uh, the statistics. And, and in any case, Mr. Nunu, if one person, one person loses his or her life by drinking such uh, water it is one person too many so we can't put uh, you know <laughs> and say that, that, that by and large even if it's 97 percent those three percent that's a huge problem can, can you allow me to just lunch go ahead you know we are an association right and then we also survey the market area now i can bet you in every corner Every corner out there, you have a sachet water producer. And a sachet water producer, before you produce sachet water, your, your facility must be licensed. We run close to about 5,000 me uh, members across the length and breadth of this country. And we, 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 we supervise and we survey the, the production area. Our members act as whistleblowers. Grant me, I have sachet water. I, I, I produce sachet water, I know what it is. Why well, by picking a sachet water, I can just tell whether this one is fake or not by the FDA number. I could just pick it, go on it. And our members are aware. So we act as the first whistleblowers for the FDA. And so then the surveillance, this thing uh, on the market, on, on, the, on the space, market space, is, is, is so serene. I mean, it is, it is so apt. To a very large extent, you cannot. It is so dangerous for you to do that. Somebody will pick you up, a member who is registered, close to you. Because if you are, if, if you are producing sachet water next to somebody who is producing, I mean, you see, you are competitors, and you will make sure that you do the right thing. So we act, we have about between three to 5,000 members, I mean, uh, surveilling the, uh, what is the market space to make sure that what is out there is apt. And like what I'll say is that our system, F, uh, Ghana water system takes our clarity and takes our pathogen. Sachet water and bottled water goes the extra mile, you can, you can check from the FDA, of making sure that the water that is put out there right. doesn't have heavy metal, 
And if you do have the heavy metal, there's no way, absolutely no way you can get the FDA and Ghana standard stand box certification. So as we speak, so, I mean, the, the, mm. the, safest, the safest means, I'm not, I'm not advertising, but that's the truth. Of water. We use reverse osmosis. The Ghana Water Company cannot or may not be able to, uh, what is it, uh, up, uh, use the uh, reverse osmosis system to supply the homes. Now, Ghana Water itself, <laughs> they okay. package, mm. they, they are what we call mm. the G water. Mm. The G water is water produced, packaged water produced by Ghana Water. It is in bottles and it's in sachet. That water I can vouch. They use the reverse osmosis, but they can only put it on the market and commercial like all of us. So to do that, there's a need for you to use the reverse osmosis system, which all, and I mean all, is a, is a standard for all sachet water and bottled water producers in the country. Right. Let, let me just find out from you two quick things. Uh, so clarify for me, you are saying that those sachet water producers who have FDA accreditation, their water actually does not contain any heavy metals, but water from the Ghana Water Company Limited does or could contain heavy metals. Is that what you're saying? I like to say, it's, I say could, because could. of the system that we use. Like we all do, I say well, there are three things. We have gone through the first phase of clarity, second phase of uh, uh, pathogens. But we are, we are, the commercial ones are the only ones who go the extra mile to use the reverse osmosis system. And that one takes care of heavy metal. The scientists are there, they can prove what I'm saying. And if you have, of course, before you, all, you get the number, you run a test, that includes heavy metals. And mm. you'll be given the number and certification only if your water goes through all these three parameters of testing. Right. Clarity, pathogens, and heavy metals. On, and on, so, mm. contract, I rather give it the, the safest water as you speak now. Now, it's so scary. I mean, it's and you see, we appeal to all those who are into this galante thing. You are not helping anybody. It's becoming way more expensive for us to even treat our water. I, I'm adding to the core, the Ghana water core. It's not easy for us as well. If you are using Ghana water, or you are using where the stability is so high and the figures are so high, these reverse osmosis systems block that easily. And they are irreversible in most times. And they are pretty, very expensive. One membrane, the 8040, is going up to about 10,000. Some are using 10, 30, 50, 100 of them. It is extremely. And we ourselves are feeling the pinch. Not only Ghana, Ghana water, but we are feeling the pinch. But we don't have an alternative. We cannot change. We cannot go any less than what we have been asked to do. You can't do without the arrow. If it blocks, unfortunately, you have to go by another one and fix it. Otherwise, you are going to have these heavy metals, whether you are in the water, whether you're using borehole or you're using surface water. Right. In other words, it's also impacting the cost of business for you guys. But... Uh, yeah. My, my, my final. Mm. I'm appealing all the authorities and all those whatever can do. Please come to our aid. This this galamse must stop. Whatever we have to do to get this to stop, it must stop because we also possess water and we are feeling the pitch. Our waters, the stability levels are so high. If the if the heavy metals are so high, then it means that if my my arrow or reverse osmosis system has goes six months and I'm using it for two months and it is way too so expensive. Okay. And with what what difficult to pass on the cost that easily. So right. we are appealing. Right. Uh, the, the final bit I want to run by you before my colleague comes through with her set of questions has to do with the pathogen. Uh, test or the pathogen end of things. So you've spoken about heavy metals and reverse osmos osmosis and what it does. But the pathogens, a research by KNUST has revealed that some of the sachet water, right, contains coliform bacteria. I'm not even talking E. coli, though they are in the same. Uh, that is basically fecal matter <laughs> that has got into water. Is this a possibility based on what you're telling me, sachet water, because the KNUSD came through with that research, or is it that you think these may have been some of the miscreants in the, in the system, uh, Mr. Nunu? Well, like I said, it, it's not a watertight situation, right? Like you said, it's not all, some of them. I don't know the basis. I also have a data from the World WHO, uh, you know, they did on sachet water in Ghana. And that's, uh, it wasn't 100% though, but it's still 92 percent uh, What the uh, USD did was way back in maybe 2022, right? We are in 2024. 
things have, have, have improved. Of course, in every, every society, in every organization, I must admit, there are some miscreants. But in our case, I mean, over 99% of uh, what I can, I can vouch are clear. Now, if you don't even need to do much, make sure. I mean, some of them, sometimes when things become difficult, it's one thing you observe that people just go outside. If you have to dis dispose of the thing, they try trying to fix it back where the pores open and you can have some of these things missing. But then we are talking to our members. And mind you, I have my brand to protect. I have my brand okay. to protect. And so doing our best. Well, if you put the dirty water out there, of course, you stand to lose. Then sure. uh, uh, the, the consumers tend to do and drink only water that they are conversant with. Water like mobile water or standard water. They have been around longest, close to our 30 years. These are brands you can trust, you know. And so then if you go to the market, largely... Uh, the public must know, and those even who are producing water, my colleagues must know, there is no shortcut out there. You can't say that, oh, I want to compete and then, and then, and then cut costs, and that's why I take my, me my memory somewhere, then they, they blow wash it and I bring it back. It's going to tell on your product. That is why you are not able to sell. Do the right thing. Right. Buy the replacement you have to replace. Don't go okay. to work, try to wash your re uh, resources. Did them. Change them when you have to change them. Mm. Either way, it's going to to even get the portion. That's why the big ones are always waiting. Because they use the right one, they use the right equipment, they're able to replace them. Mr. Uh, Mr. Nunu, uh, uh, Sweetie Abachi, what, what I find interesting, he says there's no shortcut. Reminds me of Manifest Song. Eh? No shortcut to heaven. And interestingly, in that song, it's galamsey scenes uh, that you see. There. I don't know what your thoughts are on, on this. One. He says he has a brand to protect. As of July 2023, last year, the fourth estate uncovered 144 sachet water companies in Accra, producing without FDA licenses. And this what is I just want, Accra. This is just Accra. So what I want to get here from you is how far do your tentacles reach in terms of the other parts of this country? Sometimes you sit in Accra and you think that everything is happening here as is. But really, that's not it. So you yourself have also said that it's expensive to buy these membranes for the reverse osmosis and all that. What monitoring and evaluation systems do you have to ensure that the other parts of this country, I'm talking about Upper West, um, Volta, Ketu, all the places that are, you know, are fall under the category of rural areas, you are ensuring that you're actually producing water that has been, I mean, what you say is that the Ghana Water Company does the clarification and chlorination, then the other part, which is the reverse osmosis. What monitoring and evaluation systems do you have in place to ensure that all parts of this country, all 16 regions, uh, following through with these processes that you talk about? Good. I mean, the only thing we can do is to act as whistleblowers for the authorities, the, the regulators. As if you heard the uh, GSA boss speaking on this documentary, he mentioned that we have this three uh, uh, approach with the FDA, with the GSA, and then with the Sachi Water Association. We are in talks with them first and foremost to harmonize our approaches between the GSA and then the FDA, and then we come in. What we're trying to do, we have a proposal with them that, listen, we can do way more than you can do. Now, for you to produce sachet water or bottled water, you need two main certifications. First, your facility must be registered, and then secondly, your product itself must be registered. With the registration, we are in touch with them that, listen, we are an association. We are in all 16 regions plus all districts in the country we are present. We are very, very visible. Our eyes are everywhere. So we are asking that we are in touch with them. That listen, this for anybody who has been authorized to produce sachet water and his facility has been certified and registered, has a certificate. We are talking to them that we could have a number plate, right? Like we have on our doors. This is a number plate provided by the FDA to GSA. And then you place it on your door or your production facility. Our members have been talked to you or we've been discussing this so that we can act as police for the DST. And so if you if we see somebody and even the public can come on board. Mr. Nunu, in the is, past in the past two years or just this year, how many of such whistleblowing um, activities has produced results? How many people have you um, brought to book because they're you know producing and selling water without clarifying, chlorinating, and purifying the water with a reverse osmosis. 
If you say that you are sure that all your members are going according to the books, yet you say the only way you can tell is by whistle blowing or monitoring and ensuring that when you see something, you say something. How, how much result have you produced with this approach? Well, I, I, it's not zero, but then I can't put a figure to it now. Then, we cannot, we, then you cannot state with such confidence no, that your members way, are actually uh, purifying uh, the water that they're selling. Well, what are, we, we, we and I'm cannot, speaking specifically in terms of the rural areas. Own interest to make sure. I mean, if I'm producing water and then you are competing with me selling water cheaper than I am, I'm, I, I'll be quick to report to you. And all our members are prepared to come on board. It's only left the final stages. Of course, we cannot just start. Uh, we, we cannot just start putting our 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 what is it? Uh, facility license on it. FDA must approve of it. TSA must approve of it. And then the design must be approved on. Once we get a green light, we do. But on our own, on our we call, we call hotlines, people call our office, we, we, we relay it to the SDA, we relay to the FDA. And, then and they you go, haven't and caught they... anyone yet, right? As we speak, they, just this year, was, you was, have not yeah. caught anybody who's producing water that has not been through the processes that you've just outlined, through your no, I'm, monitoring I, and whistleblowing um, I, approach. A couple of, uh, what is it, prosecutions and arrest, uh, prosecutions and then even imprisonments out there. I think the FDA will be in a better position to tell you how many people have actually been prosecuted and jailed, and then some are in the process of being prosecuted. I mean, they, they have the figures they can tell you, but we are playing our part. We are reporting when we, there's a need for us to report. Once it comes to us, we fire it to the FDA, and they take it over from there. I'll move on from you in a bit, but please stay with us. Let me find out from Mr. Um, Tete, how prudent or how um, significant is this reverse osmosis um, purifying method that Mr. Nunu talks about. Mr. Samson Tete. Yes, please. Um, yes, I'm here. Well, it's 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 uh, one of the best uh, systems we have mm. for water treatment. And um, like I said, that is only if we can guarantee that every sachet producer is actually using that reverse osmosis method. Okay. Uh, he has mentioned the fact that it's quite expensive and, and that is where the challenge is coming in from. And uh, from what you have also shared, if within Accra alone you have over 144 sachet producers that have not been licensed, it tells you there are more if you get outside of a crowd. Okay, yeah. and, and, and yes, and, and but unfortunately, um, people have come to trust and believe in the sachet water. I think the Ghana Water Company did make, talk about that. And so we really need a level of education. Um, as you mentioned, their surveillance method, it is not enough that just the um, sachet producers association members are doing the whistle blowing. If, if the education goes on and there is that public awareness, then everybody will act as a, a security person because you are also safeguarding your own life, ensuring that you don't have people who are doing things for their monetary gains to the adverse effects of our health in the, in the system. Right. Then we can ensure that we, we, we are dealing and controlling uh, illegal production of sachet water in the system. Mr. And Mr. Tete, yes. A quick yeah. interjection. You said something that, oh, the general public, many people seem to trust the sachet water and all of that. Are you suggesting, yeah. based on what you know and what we've discussed, that maybe the trust of the general population, as far as sachet water is concerned, should be measured? Is that what you're saying? It should be. It should be. Okay. It should be. Because, I mean, um, the evidence is there. You've seen the, the reports that have come out from... Um, I remember we did some research uh, many years back, so I don't want to refer to that. But if you are talking about 2022, that is quite recent work done by KNUST, and, and the results are there. So we should have some level of measure. We cannot say that every sachet water is wholesome out there. That, that is not the truth. But I find it curious that we cannot quantify the number of people who are actually licensed and who are not. It makes it 
it's like we're just roaming in a worldwide way. Like, we don't know who's what, which water. And it, you see, I want us to step away from Accra. Here in Accra, mm -hmm. it's easy to, to tell which the popular brands are, those who are, you know, approved by the FD and the rest. And in the documentary, the man was saying that when you go to a funeral in your hometown, you do not know for sure if the sachet yes. water or the bottled water you're drinking has been through the processes of clarifying chlorination and, you know, this reverse osmosis that we are now talking about. So how do we not have a number to this? To this? We, we should have number. We should have the number. FDA should be able to give us the number. Okay. Uh, Mr. Nunu and, and his people should be able to look at their data. So I would suggest that if we are looking further into this, we must do detailed inquiry into the kind of data that we have. We should be able to produce the data because we can't be speaking, I mean, that, that is not a scientific fact where we don't have the numbers. We should be able to say that this, I did hear uh, Mr. Nunu mentioned 3,000 to 5,000. So you are giving us a range. But if the people have registered as an association, you should know that oh, as at uh, September or close of August, we have 5,000 registered members. I don't think this is something that we, we, are, we shouldn't be able to say because you have a process for registration. Yeah. So we should be able to pull out the facts. Yes, we should have these numbers and we should be speaking to facts and figures when we are making any claims. That is what will give legitimacy to what we are saying. Without that, we cannot be making such statements. So we should be able to have the fact. Right. FDA should be able to tell us how many sachet producers have registered duly with them. The association should be able to tell us how many of them have registered. And if they have FDA certified, uh, what do we call it? This is print Number. Yep. Yes. We should, we should be able to have the figures. I mean, there, there shouldn't be any question about why are we not having the figures? They right. should be able to produce the figures. We'll, we'll yes. come, I see Mr. Nunu is eager to respond. We'll come to you shortly, Mr. Nunu. But staying with Mr. Tete, uh, uh, one of the assertions that Mr. Nunu made was that the water produced by the Ghana Water Company Limited deals with the particles and the pathogens. In other words, particulates and maybe any harmful bacteria or anything else that could be in the water and then with reverse os osmosis they then go a further step to deal with heavy metals and all of that but then he says that the water produced by the ghana water company limited which is contrary to the assertion of the gwcl may contain heavy metals may contain heavy metals from where you sit is this correct is that factual is it that the water produced by the ghana water company limited may or could contain heavy metals? You know why I cannot say yes or no? We need to assess what kind of equipment do they have. I mean, I got uh, Mr. Nunu when he said that they also do have a bagged uh, uh, water. That is a gene water that, which is commercialized. That's their commercial arm. And then also, We've also heard other speakers on the documentary saying that they have a mandate which does not include removal of um, heavy metals mm -hmm. from the water. And they are also saying that now they have SIO uh, approved system. ISO, Does this right. system, yes, ISO approved system, does this system remove heavy metals from the system? They need to tell us. We need to assess that this equipment that they have whether it has been designed to do this. You're then, referring to the sachet, sachet producers? The sachet water producers? No, no, or no the Ghana water I'm talking company to limited? Ghana Water Company. Okay. If they are saying that we need to look at the equipment that they have, whether they have the capability of removing heavy metals from the mm -hmm. water, then we can bring a closure to that discussion. So as we, as we have this conversation for you, you don't believe fully that the Ghana Water <laughs> you know, company's water or is, is free of heavy metals. That, that's your position now? It, that, that's my position because I don't have the proof of okay. the equipment that they have, whether it's able to do that or not. That's yes. interesting. Mr. Nunu, you've been, you've been raring to go. What, what are your thoughts on some of these, you know, conversations yes. we're having and uh, assertions made by Mr. Tete? Yes, if we have this, I think we are all saying the same thing. The only way you can assure, you can be assured that the water 
does not contain these heavy metals is through the use of a reverse osmosis system. That is the ultimate filtration system, you know. And the G, uh, Ghana, the Ghana Water Company was not designed to use the reverse osmosis system, which is pretty very expensive. That is not to say that other countries, I mean, if you go to the, I've seen documentaries, I've seen pictures of uh, municipal water lights in other countries where they actually use, not in this country, other countries, they use the reverse osmosis system. Ghana Water Company, they probably, uh, through the discussions and dialogues going on, may decide to go that, that, that tangent. But then the public, if they do, must be prepared to, I mean, buy the bullet because it comes with the cost. You know, but as I speak, the only way we can guarantee, like you said, that okay, this water does not contain heavy metals is through the use of reverse osmosis system, which is now the basic, uh, what is the filtration uh, equipment you know, uh, prescribed by the FDA, and which all sachet water and bottle water companies certify and have the FDA number are using currently. Mm. Thank you so much. Um, we are wrapping up, but I'm just thinking to myself, Benjamin, in terms of immediate steps, we are relying on water, bottled and sachet water because Ghana Water Company is facing some challenges and also because of illegal mining activities. And the number of companies listed on this site, um, Fourth Estate site, it's alarming. And they are right here operating in broad daylight at Pamwan Junction, close to MTN, at Trade Fair, Accra, at Ashaman, in front of the official town, Premier Drop. So is there a way that the FDA, GSA, or some other authorities can clamp down on all the various um, sites where we are producing these bottled and sachet water and ensure that if you don't have a license, they close you down? So that for the meantime, <laughs> the water that we are drinking, in fear of Galamse activities polluting the one coming from our taps, are not equally doing us the same harm. How do we move on from here? No, this, particular, this particular case of the uh, what is the fourth estate. I think is that Mr. Nuno? Yes, yeah, Mr. Nuno on the line speaking. This particular case of accepting number 144, so I spoke to the issues when the publication, when publication came up. And I think that FDA has descended on all of them. I mean, everybody. So this, they, when, once they come up, it's part of the whistleblowing blowing process. So FDA, I know, too, has picked on these companies. And then I think they've dealt with them. But I guess, like I was saying, they will be in the best position to give us the, the figures as to how many are being prosecuted and how many have been prosecuted. Thank you so much, Mr. Nunu. And we also spoke to Mr. Samson Tete, and he's an engineer um, at Water Resources. And Water Resources Engineer, Samo Tete, is the president of the Sachet and Packaged Water Producers in Ghana. But right before we go, the Energy Commission and Ministry of Energy, in collaboration with the Ghana Education Service and Ghana TVET Service, presents the fifth edition of the Energy Commission Senior High Schools Renewable Energy Challenge. And this challenge aims to develop the research skills of senior high school students and promote technological innovation in renewable energy. Competing fiercely in this thrilling competition are the following schools. Obwasi Senior High Technical School, St. James Seminary Senior High School, Ola Girls Senior High School, Ahantaman Girls Senior High School, Bando Senior High School, and Dabukpa Technical Institute. You want to join us for the grand finale on Tuesday, October 8th, 2024, at the Accra International Conference Center, or you can catch the broadcast live on Joy News at 9 a.m. And this event is proudly sponsored by GIZ, Ashesi University, and French Development Agency, as well as the VRA. Benjamin will bring you some more. Well, also note that Joy News and an amalgam of professional bodies is organizing a public speaking event on the theme Transformed Individuals Transforming the World, a challenge for the religious community in Ghana. The speakers you can hope to hear from Dr. Philip Engman, Dr. Mrs. Yvonne Yonchua Eseku, and Ambassador Umar Sanda Ahmed, Lieutenant Colonel retired, of course. The main speaker for that, Reverend Dr. Joseph Kofi Entry, and the moderator will be our very own Philip Osaibons, who host of Eko Si Seng on Asempa FM. The date is the, is the 17th a day of September 2024 at 6.30 p.m. The venue is the British Council Hall. If you'd like to seek further information or get further information on this, you can call the number 0244 220-427-0244-220-427. This event is powered by Joy News and Joy.
FM. Before we take our breather, Sweetie Abochi, you know, you remember in recent times, just on the back of what Mr. Nunu was saying, Slim Fit. Mm. Do you remember the incident? Yeah. How, how many two, men's two, two months? Different. Exactly. So there's slim the original fit one. And then Slim Fit. They were both, I mean, the original one, which is certified, registered, going through the right processes, and another one, very similar, yeah. that came on the market and people, so who knows what people drank within that period when the, the contraband one was on the market. And these are some of the things we are talking about. You should take, uh, authorities should take Ghanaians and citizens seriously. You know, if, <laughs> if we leave some of these things to chance, we will all die, oh, eh? Anyway, we'll take a break and we'll return with more.